So for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Darren, I'm the curate here, and for some reason I think you lot have annoyed somebody because you're stuck with me this morning. <laughs> so it'll be an adventure, it's my first time ministering here as a priest, I deaconed here for Father Stephen a couple of times and it was absolutely lovely, so I'm really looking forward to this. It should be an adventure guys, one way or the other, that's the word we're going to go with, adventure. <laughs> And so, hopefully, everyone's got a copy of the Order of Service, and we'll begin at the top of page one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. And so, we'll pray together the second of the prayers in bold. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
are all made in God's image. But indeed we fall short and we mar that image. So let's take a moment to call to mind those times this week that we could have been better. Safe in the presence of our forgiving and loving Father. And so we pray together the words at the top of the page. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. But soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. 
for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. This is the word of the Lord.
Hallelujah. The sheep that listen to my voice, says the Lord, belong to me. I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them listen and understand it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles then the disciples approached and said to him do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you'd said he answered every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted let them alone they are blind guides of the blind and if one blind person guides another they shall both fall into a pit but Peter said to him explain this parable to us and then he said are you also still without understanding do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this is what defiles for out of the heart come evil intentions murder adultery fornication theft false witness slander these are what defile a person but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile <clears throat> Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon a Canaanite woman from that region came out and she started shouting have mercy on me Lord son of David my daughter is tormented by a demon but he did not answer her at all and he sent his, his disciples came and urged him saying send her away for she keeps shouting after us he answered I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel but she came and knelt before him saying Lord help me he answered it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs she said yes Lord yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table and then Jesus answered her woman great is your faith let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was healed instantly this is the gospel of the Lord speak in the name of God who is Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen. Amen please take a seat my friends the world looks radically different from up here this is the first time I've used one of these so uh, this is different but let me start by asking you a question have you ever been offended it's quite an easy one isn't it I imagine everybody's thinking well yeah absolutely I have some may even be thinking I've been offended this morning if not, I'll get to you, all right? I'm only one man. 
But what caused the offence? Maybe it's something that someone else has said to us, or maybe they've said something in our earshot, and we think, oh, that's not right. Maybe it's something that hasn't been said to us. Maybe we thought we would do a thank you, and we didn't get it. We could be offended because something someone's done to us, or maybe it's something they didn't do when we felt like they should. I know, of course, this morning I had, I had quite a few sort of shake their heads at me, so let's have a look. Who's on social media? Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. A couple of hands, excellent. Thank heavens for that. <laughs> but I could almost guarantee that if you're on these social media networks, you'll see at least one thing that offends you quite often. I would say my Twitter, so many times I have to not so much bite my tongue. I mean, what is the social media equivalent of bite your tongue? Bite your thumb, maybe? But in today's gospel, Jesus names a wide and varied list of things that can cause harm or offence. But they're also things that distract us from our faith. They're pitfalls. And he suggests that what one person does can also cause another to blindly follow them without taking the time to stop and think about the consequences of what it is they're doing. The Pharisees, as always, were offended because not only did this teaching go against their very legalistic and very rigid rules, but Jesus also suggested that they were encouraging people to follow them blindly just because of who they were. Their class and their prestige was all the authority they needed. Of course, that raises a pitfall, doesn't it, when we think of the lack of authenticity that may exist in this instance. And we see it all the time. Even today, in 2023, we see it. There's the almost cult following that Donald Trump has managed to amass around himself in the United States. Or the fanatical consumption of that prime energy drink because two YouTubers have made it. Or maybe when we look at the many vanity projects of the new age social media billionaires that go ahead and buy Twitter instead of trying to fix world hunger. And of course, as with all of Jesus' teachings, there's always so many layers. There's always something that we need to dig down to, to dive down to. And I could have filled this sermon slot with instances in scripture where Jesus simply doesn't pull his punches, where he can be quite blunt and there are times when the blunt nature of his words, they give us pause for thought. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I'm sat reading something in, in the Bible, in scripture, I stop and I think, why did he approach it in that way? And sometimes the answer is simply this. Being blunt cuts right to the heart of a matter. It gets straight to the point, even when that point may not be comfortable for some people to hear. And much of the time, in this day and age, we're conditioned to soften the blow when we talk to people. To try and reach a concordance, an agreement with what's going on. And almost all of the time, I'd say 99% of the time, that is absolutely the best way to be. But there are some times when that simply isn't enough. There are times when it's shrugged off as something that's less important. Maybe... In a worst case scenario, it's even ignored. However, there's one thing that every single person in this room and on our live stream today knows. We know that Jesus is the Son of God. We know that he was sent to save us all. And so if his words offend us, then maybe it's time to take a bit of a look in the mirror and ask ourselves, why is this offending me? What aspect of my life is Jesus speaking right into here? But I love today's gospel reading because it's a bog off. It's a buy one, get one free. You get two stories in there. The Canaanite woman comes next. She's a woman who she desperately needs Jesus' help. I imagine at this point she's tried almost everything she can think of. And all of a sudden she sees him. And there's something about him 
that makes her think, you know what, he can help me. She's a woman who's willing to do anything at all for her daughter. And as a father myself, I can quite happily say there's nothing I wouldn't do for my kids. And so this Canaanite woman, she has actually, if you read the story, just as much reason, if not maybe even a little bit more, to be offended with Jesus. Now Jesus does a wonderful thing here. He actually plays bad cop a little bit. And I, I find myself thinking, it's the way he does it that reaches this woman. Because he says, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now think about it. If any of us had approached Jesus to ask him for help, and then he received the response that he gives her, we get that, well, shouldn't really take the kids' food and throw it to the dogs, should you? We'd be flawed. And this woman, she had so much on her mind. Her child's in desperate need of his help. And then if things couldn't get any worse, Jesus says, well, you know, I haven't really been sent to minister to you lot. I've been sent to sort out the, the members of the Jewish community. Indeed, there was a saying at the time in that area that likened pagans to dogs. Although, in the true fashion of Jesus, he uses the term puppies when you translate it to soften it a little bit. And yet it comes good. In verse 28, Jesus says to her, you have great faith. Now, one of the Greek words for great is mega. Mega faith. It's not good faith. It's not big faith. It's not brilliant faith. It's mega faith. How amazing is that? She doesn't just have a, a good faith. I imagine most of us in the world think, yeah, I'm a fairly good Christian. I'm a fairly solid Christian. How many of us are mega? And then, if you go back and you look at the history of the area, everything was wrong with this woman in terms of Canaanite and Jewish relations. She was the wrong gender. She was a woman, for starters. She was the wrong religion. She was a pagan. She's the wrong nationality. Well, she's a Canaanite. But she still spoke up. She still went to Jesus. She still said those words, Lord, help me. Because she saw the simple naked truth that Jesus Christ could save her daughter when nobody else could. And often, the voices that tell us were wrong, she, she would have known all of this. She would have known that he was a Jewish man who his disciples called rabbi, so he was educated to a degree, I guess. She would have thought, you know what, I can't really speak to him. What do I do? But she took the plunge and she went for it. Because quite often, those voices that tell us were wrong, they come from within. And over the years, I've heard a lot of wrongs. I've heard how wrong I am. I've heard wrong background, wrong accent, wrong look. Oh, yes. But my friends, Jesus sees past all of that. And not one of us is useless to him. Not one of us is there to be discarded. This woman who was, who was wrong on so many levels, and I say that word in bunnies, she was wrong on so many levels. She put herself to one side because there was something bigger at stake here. And it's one of those moments where you read it and you sit back and you think, my gosh, what have I just read? Because that woman wasn't offended. She wasn't hurt what had been said. She didn't have a fragile ego. Indeed, her ego wasn't anywhere in the equation. She remained so focused on what she needed to do. Her thoughts weren't about her need to be right or her need for respect. Her, her, her thoughts didn't even focus on feeling hurt. Her faith said to her, you need his help. And nothing at all was going to stop her from going in front of him and saying, Lord, help me. And the thing is, my friends, every single one of us in this room today and indeed on the stream and all over the world that call Jesus Lord, we have that inside of us. We have that calling, that need for Jesus. In respect, again, of this Canaanite woman who, I've got to be honest, I've got so much admiration for. Jesus heals her daughter because he's so moved by her ability to step away from herself, to leave her own self there. 
It's even more remarkable when you think about the tensions between the Hebrew and Canaanite races. The two aspects of our gospel are very much opposed. You see, the Pharisees, they immediately see the insult. They grab their sabers and they start rattling them and they take it to heart and they're offended by the very fact that someone dared to challenge them. The woman, go ahead, take a shot at my ego. I don't care. My daughter's at stake. The two stories, my friends, deliberately pull us out of our comfort zones in different ways. They ask us to examine ourselves, to look deep inside of us and say, how would we react in each of those situations? Are we like the Pharisees? When we're challenged, we immediately go on the defensive. Or are we like the Canaanite woman who sees things bigger than ourselves? My brothers and sisters, it's oh so easy to take offense, to write a situation off and to walk away. But I would urge you, my friends, be like the woman in today's gospel. Take that approach of stepping away from yourself. Let the faith you have in Jesus guide you. Don't be afraid, warts and all, to come before him and say, Lord, help me. Because we never know the doors our faith can open. That woman, her daughter would not have been cured had she not put herself aside stepped out and said those words, Lord, help me. Don't be afraid, my friends. Go before him. Remember those words, Lord, help me. Amen. Friends, if you're able, would you please rise as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. To God, who loves the world he has made, let us pray for the church and the world, for ourselves and all people according to their needs. Lord, let your church be constant in prayer, never doubting your power to save. Fill your church with vitality for the work to which you call it. Keep her firm in the inheritance of faith. We pray for the worldwide church. 
praying especially for Christians who pay a heavy price for their faith, who daily experience hostility from their government, employers and neighbours as, as a result of identification with Christ. Lord, in your mercy. In our own diocese, we pray for your blessing on all bishops, priests and deacons, for Archbishop Andrew, Bishop Mary, Father Stuart, Father Keith, Father Gareth, Father Gary and Father Darren, and Sarah Aurida. Fill your ministers with zeal to preach the gospel at all times. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Loving Father, keep us strong and firm in prayer. Preserve us from all evil and malicious intent. Give us the light to know whether what we ask accords with your will for us. Forgive the times when we have said or thought that our prayers have not been answered. Let our trust never fail when you have to wait for the time of fulfillment that is in your purpose. Increase our faith that what is right for us will come in your time and in your way. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for our young people, wrestling with all the uncertainties of their examination results, praying especially for those who feel disappointment with their grades. We pray for those who administer, that they may honour the visions of our youth, opening doors of opportunities to all. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we remember those who are suffering in our troubled world, or the people of Ukraine, Sudan, and all other places of conflict and violence. We also pray for those places ravaged by wildfires across the globe, Tenerife and Canada, and most recently the people of Maui and the Hawaiian Islands, who have died in the destruction of Lahaina. Comfort all those who are now homeless, and give them hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Have mercy, O Lord, on all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Grant them the knowledge of your love, comfort, and healing in body, mind, or spirit. We bring to mind those who are on our hearts today, whom we know or have asked for our prayers. Give peace to all unquiet minds and troubled spirits. Comfort and cheer them in weariness and depression. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Merciful God, remember the souls of your servants who have recently passed. Especially John Beadle, Gwyneth Lewis, Nay Davis, Donna Main, Mansell Thomas, Keith Morgan and Tony Evans. And for those whose years mind falls at this time, Kynwen Ethel Silverhorn, Pamela Marie Davis, Harry Summers, Frank Caleb Price, Lynn Rawlings, we pray for Joan ha June Hockey, Alfred Rees, Brenda Evans, Myra Kennedy, Ronald Allen Harris, Joan Jones, Catherine Mary Nichols, John Aramas Jones, John Lewis Brimble, Giles Evely, and Alex Jack David Frost Forrest. Be with the bereaved in their loneliness and give them the faith to look beyond their present troubles to your Son Jesus Christ, who died and rose again and lives forevermore. Deepen our understanding and sympathy that we may be channels of your loving peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Faithful God, forgive us when we only turn to you when things trouble us and when we forget to thank you for your blessing and bounty. Help us to reorganize all the wonderful things in your world, recognize all the wonderful things in your world for which we should be grateful and send us out into the coming week ready to show our gratitude in all we do and say. 
Lord, in your mercy. In a moment of stillness, let us each bring our own prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. We bring these and all our prayers together as we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. My friends, if you're able, would you please rise as we share the peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. My peace I leave with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us show one another a sign of God's peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that at the, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks, Holy Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is our great high priest who has freed us from our sins and has made us a royal priesthood, serving you, our God and Father. And so with the hosts of angels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim the glory of your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. and thanks to you, true and living God, creator of all things, giver of life. You formed us in your own image, but we have marred that image and fall short of your glory. We give you thanks that you sent your son to share our life. You gave him up to death that the world might be saved and you raised him from the dead that we might live in him and he in us. Sanctify with your spirit this bread and wine, your gifts to us, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. As he has commanded us, Father, we remember Jesus Christ, your Son 
proclaiming his victorious death, rejoicing in his resurrection and waiting for him to come in glory, we bring to you this bread, this cup. Accept our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Restore and revive your people. Renew us and all for whom we pray with your grace and heavenly blessing. And at the last, receive us with all your saints into that unending joy promised by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Every time we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. And we'll pray the second prayer in bold on that page. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. And now just before our final blessing, I've got some bands of marriage to read, which if I forget, Doug will hit me with the book, so. <clears throat> I published the bands of marriage between Andrew Stewart John Williams of this parish and Kerry Ann Rowlands of Menard Bidwelty Ministry area with a qualifying connection to Taff Romney. If any of you know any just cause or impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the third time of asking. I think you're safe if you're here. Nobody stuck a hand up. I think you're all right. Thank you. <clears throat> and I know everybody's itching to get off and watch the football, but I would just like to say a massive thank you for having me this morning. It's been an adventure. I think Doug put it exactly right. It's been an adventure, and I genuinely hope that I can come back and minister with you all again. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May God, who is the architect of love, may Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, may the Holy Spirit, who guides, maintains and protects all, may they surround you, may they comfort you, may they love you and all for whom you pray, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.